So this is part three of the undercutting, boxing, and decisional templates demonstration. So in this demonstration, we're going to talk about the decisional templates. So we're just going to look at the uh, some of the cross sections along this road, um, and um, to, to sort of speed up the process. I mean, if I was to basically take a section of these every single one of these ten meters to sort of assess the the road, it will sort of take me a million years. So. Um, 12D uh, MT apply MTF function is a, has included this nice little filter command in the MTF. So if you go down to um, the filter, and basically you can create one um, as long as it's equal to um, the section separation in, in here. Um, I'm going to separate mine every 100 meters or so. So when I take a view of my sections, I could basically look at every you know I mean every hundred meters or so instead and I could sort of quickly go through the project and see that it's obviously not working how we want it to. So I'm gonna quickly have a look at the uh, the templates that I've applied and um, I'll first start with the left hand side because it's a uh, it's a pretty straightforward side, it's the lower side of the road. Um, and um, it's basically pretty consistent. So the temp template that was applied originally was this road seven template left. And um, what you can see is we have uh, a few a few components of the template. We have a, a fixed component, which is basically usually the the, the road pa road pavement, or um, which are basically consistent and doesn't change. It doesn't have to think very much. And basically, these are fixed fixed strings along the alignment. I mean, 3.5 uh, meters um, at 2%, and 1 meters for the shoulder at another 2%. So inside the template, we have this decisional part, which we're going to skip at the moment, and we're going to go to the cut. So when it gets to the end of, you know, I mean, this point here, if it's beneath the the surface or above the surface, if it basically will determine what what to put in next. Um, so if this is a, a drain um, for the fill, there there isn't anything. So we're going to basically go straight to the final cut and fill and so basically it's going to get to this last EP point and then it's going to get to see if it's above the tin or beneath the tin and it's going to add um, a cut slope of 1 and 2.5 or a final fill slope of 1 and 4 and this is basically consistent with you know, the 4 and 1 fill slope and 2.5.1 cut slope. So now we'll look on the right hand side and if we go to more templates right hand side uh, we've got a diff different template called Road 710R, and it's sort of it's, it's it's basically similar to L, but slightly slightly different. So, basically, on the left hand side, um, sorry, on the on the fixed part for the top of the road surface is exactly the same, but and that when it gets to that last point, uh, it decides whether or not it's in fill or cut. Um, and if it's in cut, it basically will will include this this ditch in, and then at, from the EDRR. It will add. Um, it will basically finally interface um, in cut or fill. So we'll have a quick look at the um, at the uh, sections that we created, and we can see that um, it's it's not basically doing what we want because basically what we wanted was at beneath the um, subgrade level two, we basically wanted to determine 600 mils beneath that point. Um, we wanted a ditch drain, but basically what the uh, the current setup of the templates does is basically looking from from this final point here. So for the most part, it's um, it's in fill, so we don't actually get this this drain or for the the, the the template to decide whether or not this drain is required or this ditch is required. And um, so when we look at the sections, um, there's very few that actually get it to do what we want. I mean, for that instance, we are because I mean, this point here is beneath the uh, existing surface. So, but for for the vast majority of the times, it's all in fill, and um, it's not exactly what we what we wanted. And that's where this decisional part comes in. Um, and at the moment, there is no um, code in here. So basically, what what I've created is is a separate template um, to basically decide for us. Um, whether or not that ditch is required. So I know this template has been set up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace those templates, left and right hand side, um, with my decisional template instead. 
Um, I'll just get it to show you what it's doing and then I'll explain um, how it works. So on the left hand side and the right hand side, it's basically the same template now. There's no difference between the left and the right hand side. And we hit recalc. And now you'll see um, when I look at my sections, basically it's deciding that because this is less than 600, um, it basically is forcing in a in a in a drain a ditch on 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 sometimes both sides and then sometimes on one side. And as we can see, when we get to say this part here, this is almost a direct replication of um, what that looks like. So don't get me wrong, decisional templates are a little bit confusing. Once you sort of get your head around, uh, once you sort of get a library going, um, they become easier to modify. So when you've got an example, you can sort of modify it to, do, to get it to do what you want it to do. So how we sort of got around in the past was to sort of create a set of libraries for, for users to use and, and so they, they'll sort of pick that template for different purposes. So I will try to explain um, how decisional templates work. So for, obviously first you need your fixed part in. At the end of the fixed part, it will, it will put in a decisional. I mean, it can all be decisional, um, but usually we find that that's at least some of your template is consistent. So when you open a decisional template up, um, as I said, it's a little bit confusing. There is a lot of um, questions in here that it's, that it's asking for. And I actually found the, the old um, formatting a little bit um, clearer to understand but this is where 12b is going so this is how it works so to add different rules um, we just have to click on this type and click left le left click and you've got a load of options in here I'm not going to go into all the details I'll go into some of the ones that I've been using um, in particular the fixed cross or fixed slope this is sort of um, when you've made a decision you want to put in your string this is what you would typically use um, there's decisions in here, so tin decisions and battle decisions, and they basically will assess where the tin is in relation to the last string that you're using. And it's the same for a batter; it will decide if a batter can be f like can can um, be placed before it hits the tin, and if not, you might have to put another reason in. So there's also labels and go tos, which you need these to sort of define um, areas of the the strings. And basically, there's a continue cut feel, which basically will We'll move it into sort of this area, the final cut and fill if you wanted to. And obviously there's an end as well. So I'm probably butchering my explanation of these decisional templates. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll just go through it and I'll give it a crack. So step one, it basically, in this part between label and go to, it's basically deciding whether or not um, it's in above the tin or beneath the tin. So it's similar to how the cut fill works in here. So if it's if it's um, true, it'll basically say, "Yep, it's definitely in cut." We're going to go to the next step, and if it's in, um, and if it, if it isn't, it's going to move to the next line and then go to go to fill. So I mean, fills placed down here, uh, and then cut batter jumps jumps these pits and goes to the cut batter. And if it if it's still true again, it'll basically jump to 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 finish. So we we definitely know we're in t we're in cut. So we definitely know that this part here is beneath the tin. We're definitely going to force this this drain in. So um, the next part is a fixed um, fixed height and cross for a uh, slope. And what that what that point is doing is it's basically I've worked out the what that height is and what that slope is, and it's basically forcing in this point here. So then it goes to the next point and it says um, a better decision. So basically I'm deciding, you know I mean, if this point here is, um, if I can interface, you mean between zero and two meters between the tin, um, that's what I'm basically saying. I'm saying, is there, will it hit the tin within zero and two meters? And if so, it's gonna go to this batter flat um, label and basically it'll, it'll basically put in a batter um, to interface with the tin. 
So that's what that batter, sorry, this batter flat test is. If it isn't, um, it's going to force in, if, if it doesn't hit it, it's going to force in a fixed slope. So basically what it's doing then is it's basically forcing in this, this two meters and and then basically we know we're in tin, underneath the tin so we're going to basically force in the cut butter um, and then basically that finishes the finishes the the forced cut side so we then move to now we've done the, the we know that we're in cut we go to the fill side and what the fill side does is basically what we're doing is we're deciding whether or not the tin um, is beneath we're deciding whether or not the tin will hit the tin between this point here and this point here and if it if it if it does if it if it does if it if it if sorry if it doesn't um, we'll force in a batter and then we'll finish the fill side which is basically um, what this part here is saying is saying that there is no tin between here and here it doesn't hit it so as a result, um, force in the, the, the fill side. However, if it doesn't, we go to this label drain and basically say, well, it, it, it does hit the tin, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna force in the, the drain. So this is where it fixes, this is where it forces in that, that ditch side. And basically I'm, I'm replicating the same point. So when it gets to this point here, does it then hit the tin um, between zero and two, me two, zero and two meters? And if it doesn't, I'm going to force in the slope. And then basically from this point here, I'm going to decide um, whether or not the bat it hits the batter flat. I think I've duplicated that there. I've duplicated it, haven't I? Fix slope. Fix slope. Oh no, I've decided at the end of the I've said, can you can it, can it interface at, at zero, between zero and 10 meters? Um, this is sometimes an instance where you're sort of daylighting from the drain. Um, so we've talked about butter flat. Yeah, that's 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 it. <laughs> so don't get me wrong, um, the decisional templates are confusing. It's probably one of the worst explanations um, going around, but I haven't seen anyone else try, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, but what I need to say is decisional templates can be designed and can be coded to basically make this batter do whatever you want it to do. Um, you can put as many tests in there along the way before it hits that end. Um, and you could truly get it to do what, whatever you want it to do. Um, but once you sort of get them set up, they're, they're very easy to, to sort of um, manipulate. Um, but once you sort of get one sort of structured uh, and you sort of get that library going, they just become second nature. So the end result there, we see that some's in, some of it's in fill, some of it's in cut, some of it's got a ditch in, some of it hasn't. And basically, we're getting it to do basically what um, they're asking. So, uh, in relation to digital templates, if you if you need a hand with anything, uh, flick us an email, or you can uh, use the 12D support forum. Cheers.